Okay, I call the meeting to order. At this time, we'll stand for the invocation by Mr. Garber, and then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance and the Texas Pledge. Thank you, Mayor. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this evening humbled and grateful for such a wonderful place to live. And we ask you for your hand during this election season and for your grace and direction, not only for our city, but our county and our state. Lord, we also ask for your, that your spirit would guide us this evening in our proceedings. In Christ's name, amen. Please place the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state, under God, one Thank you. Okay. Tonight we have the honor of a proclamation for the procurement service month. Whereas the public procurement professional plays a significant role in the efficiency and effectiveness of both government and business. And, whereas, in addition to the purchase of goods and services, procurement adds value to our organization by performing functions such as executing, implementing, and administering contracts, developing strategic procurement strategies, and cultivating working relationships with suppliers and other departments within the organization. And, Whereas the purchasing division of the city of Corinth recognizes, supports, and practices the public procurement values and guiding principles of accountability, ethics, impartiality, professionalism, service, transparency, established by the Institute for Public Procurement as fundamental tenets of the public procurement profession, and whereas NIGP has proclaimed the month of March 2022 as Procurement Month to further expand the awareness of procurement professionals' role in government officials, the general public, business, and corporate leaders. And now, therefore, I, Bill Heidemann, Mayor of the City of Corinth, do hereby proclaim the month of March 2022 as Procurement Service Month in the City of Corinth. Texas and urge all citizens to join the city council in recognizing the vital role our purchasing division performs in the daily operations of our city. Okay. What, what I'd like to do is we could do the next recognition at the same time and we can get Cindy and Linda up. Okay. Uh, Very good. Let me uh, Cindy Poirier is our uh, purchasing director and Linda Toms keeps all the uh, in a good way. It might be mutual. <laughs> okay. The city of Corinth has been awarded the prestigious achievement and excellence in procurement, AEP, for 2021 from the National Procurement Institute, Inc. The AEP award is earned by public and nonprofit agencies that demonstrate a commitment to organizational excellence in public procurement and for embracing innovation, professionalism, productivity, e-procurement, and leadership in procurement. This is the first time that the City of Corinth has received this award. Under the direction of purchasing agent Cindy Troyer, the purchasing department procured goods and services valued in excess of $23 million annually to support citywide operations and manages vendors' relationships for 1,086 vendors. That's a lot of work. <laughs> the city AEP application process is a division-wide effort that took approximately three months to complete. Once submitted, the application was evaluated by an independent achievement of excellence in procurement committee, Corinth, was one of 63 cities nationwide that earned this distinction. 
We would like to recognize the purchasing department for this incredible achievement. Cindy Troyer, purchasing agent, Linda Toms, buyer, and Julia Winkley, purchasing assistant. Would the council all come down there and we'll, we'll give this to, we, the whole council is going to give you this award tonight. So, But I'll just tell you this ahead of time. Don't drop it. This award right here, you got to work out, I'll tell you, because it's not life. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Congratulations again. And again, I don't think people realize all the hard work and effort. I, when I saw you down there when we had our ice again, uh, I'll tell you, it was just amazing to watch you uh, people work there and work under some very adverse conditions and remotely and and Leanne and, and your staff just did an outstanding job. And I've, I just, it just brings back, every time I think of the ice storm, I think of that, what we went through that day or that week. So, again, thank you for all your efforts. You do a great job. Citizens' comments. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Comments about any of the council agenda items are appreciated by the council and may be taken into consideration at this time or during that agenda item. Council is prohibited from acting on or discussing that item brought before them at this time. Do we have any? Okay. Public hearing. Conduct a public hearing and consider and act on the ordinance amending the city's unified development code Section 4, Signs and Fence Screening Regulations, Subsection 4.02.11, Screening Requirements for Residential and Non-Residential Properties, Subsection 4.0211C.1, Non-Residential Constructions about Residential Zoning Classification, ZTA 21-0001. Mr. Hart. Yes, uh, Mayor and Council, I'd like to have our planning manager, Michelle Maxwell, to uh, come forward to lay this item out for you. Thank you, Council. Um, I don't know if you recall, but back on January 13th, and I know in your, your staff report it said January 20th, but it was really January 13th, you conducted a public hearing to consider the amendments to the screening wall provisions of the UDC, as mentioned, um, to provide for alternative design concepts related to the strict requirement on non-residential construction when it abuts residential zoning classifications. And at that time, we went over a presentation um, to consider alternative options such as a vegetative screen, um, some options where a screen may not even be necessary, and so on. Um, so we had a staff presentation over all of the items in the ordinance, or the concepts in the ordinance, you opened the public hearing at that time for comment, and no one, uh, no public spoke at that time on the topic. The city council then continued the hearing to February 3rd, which happened to be um, a very, uh, an inclement weather day. So the, uh, here, the meeting was canceled, though we needed to re-advertise this public hearing again um, for this evening. I would be happy to redo my very exciting presentation, if I recall you all were um, fascinated at that time. 
again. Um, I do have it uh, follow, although um, you're welcome to go, I believe, straight to additional public comment or ask questions and then consider adoption of the ordinance. Is there any question from council? Okay. <laughs> At this time, um, I will open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this issue? If not, public hearing is closed. And now you need a motion on it? Yes, sir. Um, uh, on the adoption of the ordinance. Okay. And I would entertain a motion on that item. Mayor, I'd move to approve ordinance number 22-03-03-07, amending section 4.02. Point one one screening requirements for residential and non-residential properties as presented. I'll second. Any further discussion? Catch your vote. It's unanimous. Item number four, consider an act on the park and trails dedication application for a combined dedication of approximately 17,416 square feet of trails and money in lieu of land in the amount of $151,800 for the landmark at Tower Ridge multifamily project consisting of 296 multifamily dwelling units on approximately 12.989 acres. The property is generally located at the north side of FM 2181, east of Olympias Court, south of Cliff Oaks Drive, and west of the public safety complex. Mr. Hart. Yes, I'd like to have our planning manager, uh, Michelle Maxwell, to uh, lay this item out for you. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Council, um, just for orientation, this is FM 2181. This is I-35. Public safety building is located here. This would be the landmark multifamily that you you saw exactly one year ago. Um, March of 2021 approved the um, rezoning for um, the multifamily for PD-58. Um, this is a closer look at the um, location. It's currently comprised of four lots um, on the north side of FM 2181. It's 12.9 acres. Currently, the site plan is under review. Um, the replat was just submitted on Monday to consolidate the lots, and also um, that includes an extension or road construction of Tower Ridge up to this point. This application is for approval of the park and trail dedication. Um, it's really a formality to some degree to confirm the dedication so that we have some record as staff and an action on the record that fees will be collected and that um, it will occur prior to building permits. So um, by way of orientation, the, or, the current UDC requires that one acre of land um, be provided per 50 dwelling units, or an option to consider is to provide money in lieu of that at a, a rate of $150 per dwelling unit or this combination. And the applicant is proposing to provide a combination of the both, of, of the two options. Um, as a reminder, this, uh, this project being multifamily, they are required in, a, in addition to this standard one acre per 50 dwelling units or the um, $550 that should save um, that should save five hundred and fifty dollars per dwelling unit. Just by the way, that's that's not correct. Um, 
they uh, they're proposing to to construct eight an eight foot wide trail new trail along um, Tower Ridge and a ten foot wide trail along um, FM twenty one eighty one and as part of the um, PD ordinance. It was considered that if they provided this extra path and these public access easements around their um, wet detention ponds to create a sort of a formal entry or an, a visual bit of visual interest in a park along FM 2181, we would consider providing uh, 0.3 acres, up to 0.3 acres of land to um, as a proration to offset the fees required under the, the UDC. So the proposed trail is currently approximately 0.4 acres, and doing the math, um, that would be, and you can see here, that's the correct figure, 550. The math comes out to $151,800 per dwelling unit with the land dedication. And the one thing, as part of the PD, it said may be used, and so we just want to confirm that you all are okay with that and allowing us to um, set, allow that to satisfy against that portion of the fee required. And this is just a larger um, illustration. And we are recommending approval of the application of the combined dedication of the uh, 0.4 acres of trails and the, it's called money in lieu of in our ordinance of the 158, excuse me, $151,800 that we would receive from Landmark prior to the building permit issuance. Are there any questions from council? If not, I'd entertain a motion on this item. Mayor, I'd like to move to approve the application for a combined dedication approximately 17,416 square feet of trails and money in lieu of land in the amount of $151,800 for the landmark at Tower Ridge Multifamily Project. I'll second. Is there any further discussion? Cast your vote. It's unanimous. Item number five, consider and act upon an alternative compliance tree preservation application for the removal of protected trees, six plus caliper inches, including the replanting and payment of a fee in lieu of replanting of mitigation trees located on approximately 12.989 acres within the landmark at Tower Ridge multifamily plan development. The property is generally located at the north side of FM 2181, east of Olympia Court, south of Cliff Oak Drive, and west of Public Safety Complex. Mr. Hart. Yes, we'll have our planning manager, Michelle, come back and lay this item out for you. Okay, so I think we're already acclimated to the site. Um, this is a alternative compliance. You know, we're still under our, our current UDC, even though we're considering um, revised option um, later this month, an, an amended ordinance. Um, in this project, they, the site is, let me go back actually. Um, on this site, there's a, a cluster of, of trees located in the southwest corner and then along the, um, the easement that runs north-south on the west side of the property. There are about 53 existing um, protected trees on site, meaning greater than six um, caliper inches and meet the definition of what, uh, uh, the type of tree that's considered protective on the protected list. Um, the applicant is proposing to preserve nine trees, totaling 231 caliper inches. Uh, they're removing 42 of the protected trees, which totals 909 caliper inches. And um, as you, I, I just mentioned, the, the existing UDC ordinance applies to this site. They did not request any unique provisions as part of their PD, which means that the mitigation is at a rate of one-to-one -one, um, for protected trees removed from site. Now, as a reminder, the applicants um, have no incentive to preserve um, trees under our current ordinance, but they have elected to do so as part of their um, dog park and then another tree that's located um, adjacent to the existing residential neighborhood to the north. So again, 42 protected trees of the 53 are being removed. They're preserving nine. They're required to mitigate 480 caliper inches of the nine, um, 909 in the following manner. 
73 will be replant, uh, replacement trees, and they're up there. The minimum requirement for replacement is at three caliper inches. They're proposing to put in a larger tree to create a greater impact. Um, they're also increasing the size of the required landscape um, trees that are being planted throughout the site within the landscape buffers, the residential adjacency buffer, the parking lots, the wet detention areas, and so on. This was something that was offered um, as an option by the prior planning director. Um, pavement and fee in lieu of, of replanting re of the replacement trees um, would f finish off the balance, and they are offering to provide if you consider six hundred, uh, excuse me, sixty four thousand three hundred fifty dollars um, at a rate of one hundred and fifty dollars per caliper inch for the uh, four hundred remaining four hundred twenty nine caliper inches. Uh, the plan here is the replanting plan. It shows that there are a total of 261 trees on site. 188 of those are required landscape uh, plantings, and 73 of those are labeled um, as replacement trees. It should be noted that um, they happen to show their parking lot. They, they didn't readily distinguish between the required parking lot trees and the replacement trees, but staff did go through and identify which everything is good. So... And we recommend, staff recommends that you consider approving the alternative compliance of the tree removal as presented, providing for replanting as presented, a fee in lieu of replanting um, for $64,350, and for the discretionary authority for the department director to assess fees for additional mitigation and for unforeseen re um, removal that might occur during um, construction. Council, have any questions? I have one quick question. Let me go if, back. Go back to the one where their planting is. All those trees along Tower Ridge, it, when Tower Ridge extends, yes, there are currently trees there now. Yes, these, and the, and that's some of the ones that they are going to save. Yes, it's hard to see, um, but they are the non-colored. I see trees. So here, here, along here, and then. But there's more existing there now that they're going to take out. There are some here in this location. But not on that path. They're going to try and save almost everything uh, that's currently right there? Page up there. Whoop. I do have the... They are... Um, it looks like they're going to try and save everything that's... Yeah, there. so this is in the right-of-way, so they can't... Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? If not, I'd entertain a motion on this item. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to approve the alternative compliance application for tree removal preservation for Landmark at Tower Ridge as presented, providing for replanting as presented a fee in lieu of replanting of $64,350 and for discretionary authority to uh, department director to assess fees for additional mitigation and unforeseen removal. Second. Any further discussion? Cast your vote. It's unanimous. Item number six, consider an act on a resolution adopting the Corinth Economic Development Incentive Policy. Mr. Hart. Yes, Mayor and Council, I want to have our Economic Development Director, Lisa Back, to lay out this item for you. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council, Mr. Hart. Um, before you have a copy of the Economic Development Program's incentive policy, uh, the policy provides an overview of the eligibility, target areas, types of incentives, procedural guidelines, the application, and the due diligence. The policy is in place to ensure that city staff um, conducts um, their due diligence um, and diligently negotiates the terms and fully um, analyzes the cost and benefits of the um, to ensure the best rate of return um, on incentive uh, on investment for the city the EDC board approved the policy at their February 7th board meeting and staff recommends that council adopt the economic development incentives policy as presented are there any questions from council okay if not I'd entertain a motion on this item Mr. Mayor, I would like to approve 
Resolution number 22-03-03-03, Approving an Economic Development Program Incentives Policy, Promoting State and Local Economic Development for the City of Corinth. Second. Any further discussion? Cast your vote. It's unanimous. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Item number seven, consider an act on the approval of the communication strategic plan. Mr. Hart. Yes, uh, Mayor and Council, we have uh, Finance Director of Lee and Benzelmeyer to lay out this item for you. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Earlier today during the workshop, you did hear a presentation from Kim Newcomer from Slate Communications that outlined our strategic goal for the upcoming years. Um, the strategic plan outlined four major goals. Um, one, to move from simply communicating to fully engaging. Two, to maximize the effect effectiveness of current tools. Three, to generate support and enthusiasm for change, both internally and externally. And four, to build community pride. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have on the strategic plan that was presented earlier today. Um, and um, staff supports um, approving the policy in the plan. Are there any questions from council? Okay. Then I entertain a motion on this item. Mayor, I would move to approve the <coughs> communication strategic plan as presented. I second. Any further discussion? Cast your vote. It's unanimous. Very good. Thank you very much. Consider and act on the resolution of the City of Corinth establishing a city logo use, use guide for non-city organizations and providing an effective date. Mr. Hart. Yes, uh, Mayor and Council, I'd like to have uh, Leanne to lay out this item for you. Thank you, City Manager. So the item that we have before you is for you to consider a, a, a policy um, on the use of our city logo and also the Agora logo. And what it is is to protect uh, the logo brand, the brand that we're trying to push out for the city um, to make sure that it is um, always used within the standards that we've established and that it is not misused um, by anyone uh, in the public or internally. Now, in order to um, be able to present a policy for you on the, on the logo, we first had to trademark the logos. And my goodness, that is a process. Um, and we thank Patricia for all her help. Uh, we were able to receive approval of the um, trademark in March of 2021. Uh, we started with the city logo first, and then once the council approved the Agora logo, we threw that in there as well. Uh, the trademark is valid through 2026, and again, by having this trademark, it does give us the ability to monitor the use of the logo, and it does give you the authorization to approve the policy um, that we are presenting tonight. So the administration of the policy um, will fall under myself um, as a director of, of, of communications. And so um, the, the process is, is that anyone that wants to use the logo will have to submit an application and it has to meet some of the criteria. And we have established the criteria within this policy. Um, I'm not going to read through everything, but the, I think the most important ones are that it does have to demonstrate a commitment to our mission, our goals, our core values, our strategic plan, and the city's comprehensive plan. I think everything that this council has done within the last few years after adopting the um, strategic plan is to ensure that all of our other policies and all of our other actions are in line with that plan. And so this policy would ensure that the use of the logo would meet that. Obviously, it would be to protect uh, the image and the brand that we are wanting to establish for the city. So the, un and probably the most important is what we would consider the unacceptable uses of the city logo. Obviously, nothing that would advocate or promote the sale or use of tobacco or alcohol. 
um, any type of pornography or adult oriented businesses. Um, and you know, there's always has to be that, that, uh, distinction between the government and religious beliefs and so forth. So it would not be anything that would advocate or promote religious beliefs. And, and finally, probably the one that we get the most comments on is, um, for, um, folks that are running for city council that they use that they use this on all their advertisement and sometimes it does give the impression that they are uh, a member of the council or they are a member of the organization so by doing this not the council the incumbents nor people that are running for council would be able to use the city logo on any advertisements um, that they are promoting during their campaign. And they also couldn't use it, you know, to support any ballot measures or anything because a lot of times, and we see that on um, some of the things that gets out for the service line warranty and so forth, if it has a city logo, then the residents believe that that is an official communication that is coming from the city. So this would prohibit that. Um, it wouldn't be able to be used to promote or support political messages that are not endorsed by the city council. And again, in no way that um, would um, bring any bad light or put the city in a bad image um, with any of its officers, agents, or employees. One thing that we did throw in, and, and mostly it does apply to the city logo, but we put it in there primarily for Agora is that um, if someone were to use this logo um, to generate profit, uh, to sell merchandise, that the city would be eligible to receive a 5% licensing fee. Now, what we know, in doing our research, we did notice that a lot of areas, and specifically once we start launching the, the park and all of the development around it, that if they start selling, you know, um, promotional items and various things that, um, they can generate uh, some revenue streams with it. This would be something that we would be working very closely with Elise as economic development, and she would have the uh, authority to put it into any development agreements. It could be waived as an incentive, and of course that would ultimately come to the council for approval as well. But it was something, you know, it, we may never have to utilize it, but it was something that we thought that we would put it in there to protect our interests if people are trying to make any money off that logo. I doubt that it will ever happen on the city logo, but it very well could um, happen with the Agora logo. Um, and with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from council? Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'd entertain a motion on this item. Mr. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I would like to move... Make a motion to approve resolution number 22030307, establishing the logo use policy for non city organizations. I'll second. Any further discussion? Cast your vote. It's unanimous. Item number nine consider an act on an ordinance abandoning a 0.162 acre portion of the right of way on Lake Sharon Drive, east of I 35E and west of Mayfield Circle. Mr. Hart. Mr. Mayor and Council, I'd like to have our uh, city engineer, George Marshall, to lay out this item for you. Mayor Council, thank you. I'll make this short and sweet. Uh, the item is uh, along what's called Lake Sharon Drive today, uh, formerly Dobbs Road. Uh, it was part of the Lake Vista Business Park. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of activity. We have our first building that's going up on the property, uh, you know, in, in the development uh, right now, which is great. Um, we have a potential development coming in, and they uh, would like to maximize the use of the land that's there. So the original plat dedicated 42 feet along uh, the future Lake Sharon Drive. During the design of the Lake Sharon Drive project, there was existing trees on the north side of the road, and we decided to shift the road about five to six feet south so that we could save those trees and not, you know, ruin people's, you know, side yards and so forth right through there. So that reduced the amount of uh, right-of-way that was necessary. So as we move forward, uh, we determined that there was an excess of about 16 feet of right-of-way that we no longer needed for the road project. And that's an opportunity that allows the developer of that land to, to maximize their buildable area um, especially when we require a 20-foot landscape buffer along our arterial roadways. So um, I, I highlighted on here the, uh, the proposed roadway work, and as you can see, the sidewalk and the road is all outside of that, that 
16 feet. So we're all good there. So you know, answer any questions. Uh, and the property owner, Mr. Lugenheim, is, is here. Are there any questions from council? If not, thank you, George. And we would, I would entertain a motion on this item. Mayor, I would uh, move to approve ordinance number 22-03-03-09, abandoning a 0 0.021 acre portion of utility easement on lot 15R, am I, am I reading the wrong one? That's the wrong one, sorry. I'm sorry. 0.16 acre portion of right away on Lake Sharon and authorizing the city manager to execute the next necessary documents. Did I read the right number? I'm sorry. The ordinance I'm seeking to have approved is 22-03-03-8. I think I read 09. I second. Any further discussion? Cast your vote. It's unanimous. Item number 10, consider an act on an ordinance abandoning a 0.021 acre portion of utility easement on lot 15R block E, Meadows North Estates. Let's go right into it. So uh, this is one of the last uh, pieces of property on Fritz Lane. Um, uh, back in 2018, the, the property was actually part of the northern um, home, and it was, a re it was subdivided. Um, and so there was a remainder piece that fronted onto Fritz Lane. The, uh, the, the parent tract uh, fronts onto Dalton Drive. When the original subdivision was, was platted, there was a 10-foot utility easement identified on the eastern edge of the property. The city has no utilities in there. We are not aware of any other utilities in that location. We've obtained uh, letters from Atmos and CenturyLink and, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, Atmos, Encore, and um, Charter Spectrum. And Charter Spectrum requested that we only reduce it to five feet as opposed to abandoning the whole thing. And so that's what's being proposed. Essentially, the, 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 Mr. Tonkin is uh, building a home, his home there, and when during the form board survey, they found out that part of the house was going to be within this utility easement. So construction had to stop until we figured this out. So glad to answer any questions. So will this resolve that issue for him? Yep. Okay. So he'll be able to pour concrete, hopefully, as soon as tomorrow. Great. Any other? Any references to where this is, please? Yes, sir. It's up on Fritz Lane, up by. Um... Oh shoot! My arrow pointed to the wrong. Oh no, that's right. No, I pointed to the wrong spot in my arrow. I apologize. That's not it. It's way up here. But. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Any other question? Not entertain a motion on this item. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve ordinance number 22-03-03-09, abandoning a 0 .021 acre portion of utility easement on lot 15R Block E, Meadows North Estates. Second. Any further discussion? Catch your vote. It's unanimous. Item number 11, consider an act on a resolution authorizing the mayor or his designee to execute the Texas subdivision and special district election and release form for submission to the office of the attorney general related relative to the endo par Tiba settlement and any future release election and release forms required as part of the Texas statewide opioid Settlement agreement led by the Texas Attorney General and providing an effective date. Mr. Hart. Uh, Mayor and Council, this is that resolution to allow us to participate in this most recent uh, uh, settlement. It also provides that for any future cases generated by the Attorney General, that the staff can go ahead and execute those on the city's behalf. Okay. Are there any questions? I'd entertain a motion on this item. 
Mayor, I would move to approve resolution number 22-03-03-8, authorizing the mayor, his designee, to execute the Texas subdivision and special district election and release form for the subdivision submission to the Office of the Attorney General relative to the Indo Par Tiva settlements and any future release election and release forms required as part of the Texas statewide opioid settlement agreement led by the Attorney General. I'll second. <coughs> any further discussion? Cast your vote. It's unanimous. Council comments and future agenda items. The purpose of this section is to allow each council member the opportunity to provide general updates and our comments to fellow council members, the public, and our staff on any issue or future events. Also, in accordance with Section 30.085 of the Code of Ordinances, at this time, any council member may direct that an item be added as a business item to any future agenda. Mr. Burke. Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Garber. I have nothing but a question. By the time it makes it down to Mr. Hart, I know we've got some events coming up, and, and you're going to be probably asking about our attendance. So if you can, uh, remember to do that. I've got my calendar, so okay. <laughs> Mr. Holsworth. Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Mrs. Pickens. Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Hart. Yes, I have three events to put on your calendar or to check with you on. First of all, Wednesday is the Chamber Awards Luncheon, and I wanted to, to uh, see who can attend that. Uh, we have a table, and uh, <coughs> I know Kelly, the mayor, and Scott, Steve. Uh, so we'll, no, 11. On, 11 no, it's, it's Wednesday. The 9th. 9th, yeah, at 11 o'clock. On the 9th. On the 9th. Uh, and that's going to be over at the 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 big the, mansion, big mansion in uh, in Hickory Creek, and then on Friday, the eleventh, is the NTC NCTC gala, or at the Embassy Suites. And so I wanted to see what time is that? That is at six thirty. Okay. Uh, in the evening, I go. I'm, I'm think I'm good for that one too. Okay. How many how many spots you got? A four, well a three. I already registered the name. Okay. Okay, but uh, that. Okay, Scott. Uh, Scott. No, I think I can go to this one. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, we're very good. Uh, okay, so we'll get you at the chamber, and then uh, so on the NCTC. Where was? Okay, you, you know, okay, Mayor, no, and Scott. Okay, Dan Danielle would likely come. Okay. Well, I don't do things by myself, sir, unless they tell me no. <laughs> okay, and then I want you to put on the calendar for uh, Saturday, March the nineteenth, and that's when we're going to have our uh, state of the city activity. That'll be on a Saturday from about nine to one, or nine to noon. Now you don't have to stay the whole time, but on Saturday, March the nineteenth. What's the format? Lynn, you want to help me with all of that? <coughs> Is there going to be a bowling tournament? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. But Mike's Bakery is going to be here with goodies. He's going to be giving away. So close to a funnel cake. So, um, so out in the atrium, we are going to have uh, 10 or 11 tables. So we're going to have departments there that will have information um, to be able to interact with our residents, to talk about the development, um, to talk about, you know, if people want to, water rates and utility billing, uh, utility billing um, uh, Piper Davidson is going to be there with a table on to promote the dog park as well to try to get um, donations. We have CWD, SPAN, um, 
oh gosh, I can't think, some other businesses and so forth that will be here as well. So it'll be an opportunity to commingle and, and, and really seek information if they want. Um, uh, co uh, what is it? Um, Combs Coffee and Mike's Bakery will be giving um, sweets and coffees and, and so forth to anyone that's here. We have Bob that will do a state of the address at 930 and then again at 1030. So he'll do the same presentation twice so that residents don't have to be here the whole time. They can come in and still have some opportunities um, to, to see the presentation. Additionally, we are going to videotape it or, or record it, and then we will share it on um, our YouTube channel uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Are there going to be any, um, like any of our committees that served um, the city? Like uh, KCB, um, um, P and Z, aware of. I guess just using this as an opportunity to make them aware that those committees exist, mm -hmm. and we could get maybe some people's interest in it. Yeah, we originally had KCB that was going to be there. Um, they couldn't get enough volunteers to man the table, so they're not going to um, be there. Um, the um, Parks Board, um, they're going to kind of be there with Piper Davidson. Uh, and then we have our ambassador group that is going to have a table. Uh, we do not have the, the P&Z board that will be there. Um, the planning department does have a table and can, you know, educate folks on the board. And as well as um, Elise is going to have one for EDC. So both of those will, will be there to share information about both, both those boards. Very good. And I believe our youth advisory committee is going to have a table as well. It sounds like fun. Is this first ever? Yes. Okay. We tr we <laughs> this is the third year we've tried to do it. Um, the first year, um, I think it was, it's been COVID both years that has, um, that we've had to cancel. Okay. So this will be the first one. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we're going to go into closed session and we're going to be uh, under section 551.071 legal advice. So. We're in, going into closed session.